What's up guys? Today we are checking out the 2022 Trek Top Fuel line. There have been some major changes to this and we're going to briefly blast through all the models and see what has came out new, what has changed and the similarities between all of them because they are all very similar just with part spec changes as you'd expect. All right, so thank you for joining me on this ride. Remember to like and subscribe if this is the kind of review and chit chat you like seeing. The 2022 Top Fuel has changed pretty drastically. Its amount of suspension has changed again. Its geometry has changed again. And it is becoming more back to what the old Fuel EXs used to be, but with the better, more modern geometry of a cross-country racer slash a down-country bike. I mean, it's impossible not to say anymore. They are very well specced. All of them come with a very lightweight frame, overall lightweight bike parts. It is really interesting to see what Trek has done with these bikes and where they're heading. It's kind of blurring those lines of where the Fuel EX is and where the racing bikes end now. So this year, all of the models are built again with longer slacker geometry and trail bike-like suspension. This is really similar to back in 2012 when the Fuel EXs had this exact same amount of travel. Um, at that time though, the Top Fuel was their XC race bike, so it served to have even shorter travel. So now Trek has introduced the Super Caliber. It defeated the purpose of what the Top Fuel was. And as bikes are pimping faster and more downhill friendly, more trail, heavier jumps, I, it, it's weird that they went this way, but it makes sense. So now it gives Trek two really good options and breaks it up really easily with a very clear name, Top Fuel and Fuel EX. They are the kind of brother-sister pair now, and they are going to be very hard to beat in many, many different ways. You know, from... 2021 to 2022 their geometries have changed such an amazing amount you know they've got like 10 mil more reach per size than the previous top fuel so just leaning back towards that fuel ex but still still in a fast flowy kind of design a 66 degree head tube angle which is a degree and a half slacker than previous models which isn't huge, but it does make a huge difference when you compare it to like four or five years ago, top fuel to now it's pretty drastic. And then they do keep that minnow link, which is really nice. So it's not a drastic change in the suspension, but overall now they've got front and rear 120 mils. So it's just going to be a little, so it's just going to be a little more supple and better throughout everything really whether you're going down really rough stuff or that faster flowier trail it's going to work really well and that's what we're all looking for right it is all anti squat optimized they call it so essentially without locking it out like you would many other bikes you actually are just going to get that much more efficiency in the suspension design itself so it won't bog down and kind of squat up and down and sag throughout the pedal stroke it just goes fast and keeps that wheel connected. The seat tube has gone again with that down country style, which this one's pretty drastic. This is two degrees different. So it's 68 degrees previously, now 70. I don't normally talk too much about degrees and such because honestly, like they're so small and insignificant, it doesn't make much sense to talk about it. But this one's had such a drastic change. It really intrigues me as to what this bike could really be capable of now. So just like the Fuel EX carbon models and the Demandes, the top fuels have that integrated storage now, the bits tube or something like that. It is cool. I honestly have never put anything in mine apart from some random peaches we found. And they were really small, useless little peaches and we thought they were apples. So... We stuffed them in my frame, took them back to someone who knows the area better and asked him what it was. And they turned out to be wild peaches. So that's the only thing I've ever used mine for. It is cool they are coming on the aluminum models, which they don't come on the aluminum models on any other Trek bike that offers this internal storage. So it will be interesting to see if that is something hinting along the ways because it really makes no sense why you couldn't have it on a Fuel EX. So this is kind of funny, I find. You know, obviously these ones have 29er wheels. This is a fast rolling bike, so it wants to go fast. It 
doesn't want 27 and halves if possible. So they have a 2.4 inch wide tire on it. It's just kind of funny to me. 2.2 used to be a pretty big tire. And if someone was looking at getting a 2.35, you'd be like, whoa, that's so aggressive. You have no need for that. And now 2.4 is on their fast bike. So it shows that before we were all kind of going off the assumption that a big wide tire would slow you down. And now due to suspension tweaks and frame geometry tweaks, whether or not the tire does slow you down is irrelevant. Now it's just faster to have better traction around the corners overall. And or they're kind of saying it might not even be that much all about the tire. We may have over, overcompensated how much the tire was doing. Knockbox 2.0. So this, I have no idea why they even have. It's like they're just backing up the fact that they did it. You know when someone makes a mistake and then they just try and argue that mistake? So Knockbuck 2.0 is fully removable. There is no need for it. It was initially made to stop the fork from hitting the frame. Nobody seemed to like it. Everyone seemed irritated by it. It didn't really make that much difference in your actual overall riding. But to add it and then say it stops your cables from getting yanked out, I guess. I've never heard of anyone do that, but I'm sure it does actually happen. So the Top Fuel 5 is the beginning level, and obviously the Top Fuel 9.9 .9 is the highest end. They have three models in aluminum, so that's Top Fuel 5, Top Fuel 7, and the Top Fuel 8. And then when it comes to carbon, they have the Top Fuel 9.7, 9.8, and 9.9. .9 topping it off with a few models throughout the carbon ones so top fuel five seven and eight all just come in kind of one part spec each and then once you get to the top fuel 9.7 that also only has one part spec for all the carbon models but when you get to the top fuel 9.8 you have three options now so you have a GX model, an XT model, and a GX axis model. The 9.9 .9 and the 9.9 .9 comes in an, also in an XX1 axis and a 9.9 .9 XTR model. All right, so they're all pretty well spec. We'll touch on the three aluminum models first. In at the five, it comes with the RockShox Recon Silver RL Solo R. Eh, it's like these names are just getting ridiculous. Honestly, it's getting tiring to say all that. It is an Air Shock, and it's you know not RockShox's entry level one, but it's a nice entry starter level. On the rear, it has an X Fusion Pro Two. When you go to the seven, you are getting a RockShox Thirty Five Gold RL, which again makes a huge amount of sense. You know, it's a big jump up in performance from the five it's just going to work a lot better it's a lot stiffer it's going to handle those corners a lot more efficiently and work way better and then this one has the fox performance float dps which has a three position dampener on it which i did forget that's one thing the five doesn't have is a two position so it's not that big of a downside but it's noticeable right when you go all the way up to the eight you do get the sid which is the rock shocks sid it is a noticeable improvement it is lightweight which is huge it is just going to work really well and then it does get the rock shocks deluxe ultimate rct which is fantastic that is a really good shock to it honestly like you are going to have a heck of a good time on that bike and that's kind of how trek has always been the eight is kind of this kind of over spec bike essentially with the seven and the eight you are getting the bontrager line comp 30 tubeless ready wheel with the five you do get the alex wheels which you know they work really well alex wheels makes really good wheels they come on a lot of different bikes and but it is tubeless compatible which is really nice big thing with all these forks is it is just a max of a 2.5 in there so you can't go ahead and buy at the 2.6 which would come on your fuel x and have this as that bike too it is limited that way all of them come with the exact same tire stock which is nice which means they will all come tubeless right out of the box for my guess they are all the 120 tpi xr4 so that's a nice lightweight fast rolling tire with a lot of traction to it obviously there's faster rolling out there but this is this nice happy medium of fast and effective interestingly enough all three of these come with the trans x posts on them so that's a dropper post which has been slowly improving over the years has always been one of the entry level kind of price point dropper posts but does its job really well now they do all come with the exact same grip to it the exact same stem there's a lot of very identical parts the headsets the brakes are different you do only get the mt200s on the five 
but you do go up to a four piston brake on both the seven and the eight and the eight again being the 6120 from shimano which the naming system really i don't understand but it's a good brake like that's a lot of power behind it it's gonna really match up with the xt part of spec on that bike slx and an xt mix on the seven and then the dior 12 speed on the five so all of them really good honestly there's no complaints between that obviously the eight is going to shift that much faster and more importantly all these things which are a slightly higher end um are shaving weight off like pretty drastically especially when you compare the weight of the five to the eight the five is 34.22 pounds and the eight is 31.44 on Trek's website, it does say the 7 and the 8 are both with sealant, and the 5, it doesn't mention it's with sealant. It is interesting that it comes with all the parts. It's ready to go. Even tire-wise, it's ready to go tubeless, but it, it might not. I think it will, but you just never know, and it's not that big of a deal if you have to buy a couple extra parts, which would shave off, you know, a pound just by getting rid of the tubes so when you go up to the carbon models i'm not going to explain all of them because there's just way too many to go into and for the most part pretty much if you choose the xt1 you get shimano brakes and a shimano drivetrain and if you choose the shram one you get shram brakes and a shram drivetrain of similar quality to each other it's just a personal choice everyone likes something different and that's the way it's going to go so the 9.7, I couldn't find a weight on anywhere, which is really interesting. Jumping up to the carbon model, so you do save a lot of weight, like a lot of weight. And this is one in part that you go to a really nice carbon frame, but two, every single one starts with a much better power spec. So the higher end ones, you're looking at 27.45 models and 26.12 for the XX11. Like, that's insane. For the 9.7, though, they just didn't mention it. I'm guessing you're still under 30 pounds. I bet you'd be around the 29 and a half, just judging on the parrot spec. That comes with a 12-speed Dior. It is only SLX, but it's an XT shifter, and the derailleur is XT. It's just like the cassette and the chain are all SLX. And they're kind of the heavy things, but it's not crazy weight we're talking about here. Um, with the higher end ones, it's obviously GX or XX1. These are all fast, powerful shifting or XT or XCR. Like these are just fast shifting set. All of them come with four piston brakes and that's including a 9.7. The 9.7 as well has that same Transex dropper post. Whereas the other ones all go to the Bontrager Line Elite or... Obviously, the one with Axis actually comes with the Reverb Axis model, which is nice to see. The 9.7 comes with the Line Comp wheel, so tubeless ready again. Everything's set to go there. The same XR4s on all of the models. When you jump up, you do get quite a wacky array of rims going into carbon. So Bontrager Line Elite 30 carbons and Bontrager Line Pro carbons. And this is where you're saving a a chunk of weight as well suspension wise you get a rock sharks rhythm 34 on the 9.7 and a fox performance float all the other higher end models you get the rock sharks ultimate rtc on the rear but in the front end with the kind of 9.8 series models you'll get the sid select plus so even one better than what the 8 had and the sid ultimate which is again just a really nice suspension this if you haven't had any of the ultimate stuff before it is one of the smoothest feeling suspensions i've ever felt it just actuates impeccably down it doesn't feel jarring it just it works really 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 well so who this bike's for i'm not a hundred percent sure it's looking like the guy who wants to attempt the king of the mountains but not actually get them <laughs> you know he wants to hit top 10 but he wants to be potentially top 10 on the downhills as well. It's a guy who's pedaling a lot and trying to keep his pace really, really fast. Pedaling out to the trails. Like, it's just a really interesting bike. I'm not sure who to recommend this to. If you want a bike, you know, similar bike in a Fuel X model, you're adding, you know, two, 
ish pounds onto each model it's nothing crazy and when you get to the lower spec ones it's getting less of a gap you are just getting bigger jumps heavier hits slacker you know more downhill it might be more based on the terrain you're doing more than anything there is no benefit to having all that suspension if you're never using it on the fuel x models so why not shave a little bit off and go for a top fuel now they're going to be fast bikes they're going to be fast rolling they're still going to be able to do a race and more importantly they'll still be able to have fun with the guys on the fuel axes you'll still be with them you'll still be riding on that tail rubbing tires it's going to be a bike you can actually handle pretty much anywhere but fast and it's going to sacrifice really not much except let's say the big downhill jumps you know not that the fuel x was purpose built for that but it's going to do better than the top fuel is all right guys hope you enjoyed the ride all right guys please subscribe and comment below which you choose are you looking at the top fuel are you looking at the fuel x and why are you choosing that also have you seen the new axis suspension automatic on and off does that make you want to buy into the ecosystem let me know all right thanks guys We'll see you out there. Good luck.